Good afternoon and welcome to the Asian Midday Market Watch. Our guest today is David Kaur, founder of the Smart Invest in Singapore. David, great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you so much, Brian. Yes, good afternoon to you and good afternoon to your viewers and listeners. Thank you very much. Now, you know, before we get your insights, David, let's take a look at how markets in the region are performing. We'll start with the cryptocurrency markets. Bitcoin is continuing its, its run up. It's at 39,720. It's up 7.87%. So it's very close to breaching that 40,000 level. Ethereum is at 2,285.91. It's up 5.21%. The picture, however, across the region is very ugly from a stock market perspective. It's a sea of red. We start with the SGX, which is at 3,131. It's down 0.25%. Bursa Malaysia's FBM KLCI is down 0.21% at 1,511.42. Uh, in, in the Shanghai Composite, it's at 3,361.08. It's down again 0.59%. The Nikkei is at 27,548. It's down sharply, 1.51%. The Hang Seng is at 25,027.16, down 0.24%. And rounding off the numbers, we've got the ASX 200, which is at 7,377.2. It's down 0.73%. David, tell us what happening. Why the sea of red? Well, I think there's probably a couple of reasons. Uh, the the first one, of course, uh, over here in Asia is primarily because the American market was down slightly last night. And despite the good numbers that had come out from a lot of the tech companies, um, some people are questioning whether or not these companies will be able to sustain that kind of earnings growth. Uh, we know that they were comparing it with uh, this time last year, which was a pretty terrible time. So that's one of the plausible explanations. And the other one is uh, the treatment of tech companies by Chinese regulators. That is clearly rattling a lot of people. And I think the backstory to this is that, uh, let's say that you are an investor and uh, you have been buying Chinese tech stocks on margin. Uh, there is quite a good chance that there could be a margin call on uh, the shares that you have. And consequently, you may be forced to sort of sell those or in fact, sell some other uh, shares that you have in order to meet those margin calls. So until we start seeing some kind of leveling off uh, as far as the Chinese tech se sector is concerned, uh, we could be getting this kind of volatility for some time, Brian. Okay, you, you brought two things. I'm gonna start first with the, the, the move in China, clamping down on not only tech stocks, ed tech technology, as well as the property sector. Um, is this potentially a good opportunity to accumulate shares given the sharp sell-off? Well, uh, I'm just about to write an article at the moment, uh, just reminding people that when you are looking at stocks, uh, you should also perform what we call the pest analysis, which is to look at the uh, political environment, uh, look at the economic and the social and technological uh, aspects of the, uh, the operation of, of, of the business. And the first two, uh, the, the politics and also the economics is something that you can't really get away from. Uh, particularly in a country such as China. I'm not saying you can't get away from that in other countries either, but uh, in, in the case of China, uh, the long arm of the regulator uh, seems to have uh, targeted right now a lot of the tech companies. I mean, you mentioned a few. I mean, you mentioned um, uh, uh, companies in the uh, private tuition sector, but also other companies like ride hailing are being targeted. And then more recently, food delivery companies have been targeted and people are now saying, who next? And until we get some kind of resolution and some kind of clarity, I mean, even in the case of Tencent, they were saying that uh, they weren't accepting any new subscribers to its uh, WeSyn or its WeChat uh, platform uh, until they understand exactly what the regulators want them to do. So when you have this kind of cloudiness going on, it's not really surprising that people are a little bit concerned. So uh, is this a good time to go in and buy? Uh, not until the political and the economic uh, clouds start to lift, will I even start thinking about looking at Chinese stocks. Now, on the other side of the equation, you've got stellar earnings from the tech giants, whether it's your Microsoft, your Apple, 
um, perhaps with the uh, exception of Netflix, which investors are concerned about. Um, but isn't this a case of, uh, we've, been, we've seen this movie before about concerns of whether they can sustain the earnings, but somehow or other they seem to outperform. Well, I, I think there's a couple of narratives there. I mean, the first one is that old stock market saying, it is better to travel than to arrive. I've never really understood that because I always like to arrive rather than the travel part. But <laughs> for a lot of people uh, who are, who are short-term investors, they like the travel. And then when they get there, they go, oh, okay, you know, that was great. Now it's time to get out. But as far as the long-term investor is concerned, when you have looked at those numbers, you're quite right. They are very stellar. And you, uh, I, I wouldn't exactly sort of classify Starbucks as being a technology company, but it does use a lot of technology now uh, in terms of its ordering process. And Starbucks swung into a profit. But what it did say was that uh, growth or like-for-like -like sales growth in China could start to slow a little. And... Uh, I think this could be weighing on people's minds. And also in the case of Apple, they're saying that maybe the iPhone sales coming, uh, well, in, in the next quarter or next year uh, could start to slow down because of this chip shortage. So it's not really plain sailing for a lot of the companies. There are lots of things going on and uh, people need to be mindful that in the short term, there could be volatility, but in the long term, I can't really sort of see uh, companies such as Apple, Starbucks, and the ones that you also mentioned being a particularly bad bet. Now, what about for the rest of the week? What are you looking out for in terms of data points that will move markets? Well, I think the most important one is the Fed meeting. Uh, people will be wondering uh, what Jerome Powell is going to say about uh, the concerns over inflation. Uh, I, I mentioned Starbucks earlier on, and Starbucks was also saying that inflation is a big concern for it, uh, particularly wage inflation. And so when you start getting wage inflation, then that starts to feed into price inflation because uh, when wages go up, it's not very easy to start taking wages back again, uh, particularly if you've already uh, uh, assigned a higher wage to uh, your workers. You can't cut their wages that easily. So I think people will be listening to see what Jerome Powell has to say about inflation and whether or not they're going to start tapering. I mean, that could be the third thing that is worrying markets right now. What is the Fed going to say? Now, David, as always, thank you very much for your insights. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, we've been speaking to David Kaur, the founder of the Smart Investor in Singapore on BizTech's Asian Midday Market Watch. I'm Brian Fernandez. Please check out our Facebook and LinkedIn pages, as well as our website, www.biztech.asia. Thanks a lot for tuning in.